We're not designed to be moving around left, right, up, down. We're not a box. Kettlebells, maces, sandbags. You just end up with this absolutely bulletproof body. It just works and it feels good mentally, physically. You could probably describe it as a bit of a screw loose. So I'm always pushing for more, more, more. That's my surgery. People respect their kind of niche. Guys out of that, just, you're talking like 90 kilo kettlebells pressed on one arm. You're like, geez. The Instagram world, the social media world is not the real world as reluctant, not anti, but reluctant as I am to using it at times. Mm -hmm. You have to separate those two minds of, right, this is how I apply my business. Now I need to do me. I'm engaging with them on a human level. Welcome back to A Brand Specialist Show. I'm here with my brother, Austin. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I specialize in unconventional training methods, sandbags, clubs, maces, kettlebells. Qualified in your landmine university as well. What is the landmine? So landmine is, it stemmed from Weck method, which we can touch on in a bit. Weck. Founded by David Weck. The idea is that you're going to end up effectively practicing movements with certain aspects of power rotation, locomotion in mind, basically. Okay. So that is the landmine and how, how I would use it, utilize it. That's, there's quite a lot of jargon in there, yeah, for like... A lot of relearning. A lot of relearning. Even myself, I'm interested in fitness and health and well-being. Let's start off with like unconventional what's your idea of unconventional training or what does somebody who's listening to this what do they perhaps need to understand about unconventional training methods and why what, is it beneficial? What for, for me yeah. the, the the where it stems from is our primal ancestral movement patterns we can do amazing things with our body we can articulate ourselves in such a way physically and mentally we can have 20 plus different squat patterns so many different ways to do a push-up it's not just in the conventional way would somebody be correct in saying conventional training that's in the gym that's using a bench press squat rack yeah these are your conventional training methods unconventional training you don't necessarily need gym equipment or there's different types of gym equipment depends on what you've got access to so for example you could still technically do a bench press like a floor press with kettlebells by laying on the floor you could do it with a sandbag as well you've got to relearn everything you thought you knew in many ways uh, what's your sporting background yeah and so yeah how did you start to incorporate and make the transition into this like un unconventional style of training I've always probably, you could probably describe as a bit of a screw loose, so I'm always pushing for more and more and more. Played a lot of sports, but I spent a large portion of dedicating my time to effectively like CrossFit and playing rugby when I was a lot younger, mm. being 27 now. Mm. I started probably training, you could say, by just literally doing like probably 200 push-ups in my room every day. Mm from the age of about 12, 13. Mm. It was just something where everything else, like I, I look at other people and it was like never enough kind of thing in terms of push, 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 push. Like I'll outwork you. So when it came to snowboarding, okay, which I got to a decent level at, you kind of just carry it over. Like it, it's so when, when you're filming for a video part, so freestyle snowboarding, street rails and all that stuff. The mentality of basically I'm not stopping until I get the perfect shot on film for that video part. That's got to be three, four minutes accumulated of clips, right? That push. So that mentality, yeah, pursuit. that pursuit of a perfect shot, snowboarding or being the best on the rugby pitch. When did that then come to lead you to discover this unconventional style of training? So the the flip to why this happens, yeah. fundamentally when I was 20, 21, mm. I had spine surgery. So Shit. discs completely collapsed, basically, they completely bulged. The the guy that did Fucking the surgery man. on me, he Crazy. turned around and said, I wouldn't normally do this on someone your age, but I couldn't do my shoelaces up at the age of 20, 21. So you had spinal surgery? Yeah. Were you paralyzed? No. What is it like, but you just, what was it? <laughs> no, seriously. Um, so meanwhile, I was still doing 200 push ups in my bedroom every day. Probably like, not the best, not to be advised. I don't know, mind over matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah like, so the, you, I went two years of being through ag agony, having sciatica down to your toes. and So it was a sciatica. That, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, all the other symptoms that come with it, and then the mental stress. It got to the point where he turned around and was like, yeah, your mindset is like, you want surgery so you can move again. What was your mobility? Let's say, like, one to ten. Bottom, I'm great. Trying, trying the top, to... great. The middle bit of hinging. Yeah. Squatting was out of the question. Middle part of hinging was just, yeah, just do you think seized that, up. <laughs> do, you, do you think that came from 
any of the activities that you were doing, CrossFit, were you doing CrossFit yeah. at this stage? At this point, I was just doing a bit of everything. I was doing a lot of CrossFit, though, specifically. Was it a injury that caused... No, he said it was wear and tear. He was like, it was just the fact you just relentlessly don't stop. And I kind of went on for probably about three or four months just ignoring it. Why? It's just... It, I just carried on, to be honest. I just carried on. I knew something hurt, but I was like, oh, I can't even be that bad. Mm. And then it, it just got really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. So with that there, obviously the, the other injuries I had, so I had like, I think it was two or three herniated discs in my neck as well. That would have stemmed from the imbalances with the hips and the spine. So that links back to the fact that we're not a square and we're designed to rotate and keep that rotation, that mobility, those full end ranges through the whole body. We're not designed to go up and down and keep rigid the whole time. Yeah, is that what you were previously doing? in terms of your training, so it aggravated your condition. I think snowboarding was the thing that actually kept me alive the longest because obviously it's highly rotational. And I'm playing rugby, but as soon as I really delved into CrossFit, that's when you're basically rewiring yourself to move in, as I said, in a linear fashion. What's that mean? So when, when you look at a lot of CrossFit movements, you're looking at up and down fundamentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you're not a fan. You need that. Strength is the queen. Right. But balance... Mm -hmm. and not balance as in standing on one leg necessarily but you are balanced as a body and balanced in your mind as well mm. you, you and yang, the polarity is which is what the whole existence of, of the universe comes down to and you're a part of that if that goes out of, out of whack it's not going to work and every rep you do where you're only moving in one plane of motion is basically wiring you down so i i really really like approve of pretty much everything that is crossfit related mm. the intensity the purpose the intent what i came to learn that it's missing is the full span of movement ranges and it's not saying that it's not varied because it is very varied but there is a, a lack of emphasis within the training system on things like rotational movement which going back into the whole primal ancestral aspect of things is what we were founded upon okay the whole idea that we can throw and swing i say to people swing lift mm. throw heavy shit and everything sorted because that's what you were made to do from day one. So how did you overcome the injury? And then and tell us a bit more about the equipment and yeah, your discovery of the so, unconventional. Yeah, yeah so it's, I think cutting that story nice, kind of relevant. Yeah, no, a big story, crazy with, story. With the, like, the disc bulges and then the, I had, I've still got it 50% nerve damage on my left It's arm. kind of put me off a little bit. The, the CrossFit stuff, like it's... it's it makes you think, has moving in that way aggravated the injuries, CrossFit and stuff like that. But you, there's something that doesn't add up as well. Maybe you can enlighten us on here because you're sitting here with me today. I've seen the way that you can throw a bag around or that you train and stuff like that. No one would assume that you've ever been mm. immobile or had a spinal injury or had spinal surgery. Mm. So... From surgery to now, or to discovering the equipment and stuff, like how did that story go? So yeah, as I said, quite a long story short, uh, you yeah. can see how obviously I came out of that. It, I, I would never stop, as I said, like, if, if it's, if it's push-ups, is there anything I can do? I'll do push-ups, that's it. You know, I set a goal, right, you're gonna do 100 unbroken push-ups with your broken back, basically. That's the goal. So coming out of that, it's like, right, how do we, effectively rehabilitate myself so the spine surgery was one come away from that specialist then you have another injury like this you see another specialist in this field then you've seen however many chiropractors and physiotherapists and every single one of them is saying the same crap basically what say? you need to strengthen this you need to you know you're you've got a week that blah blah blah, blah. and i'm looking at myself and i'm going yeah okay Nice one. And I get this from f four, five, six, whatever, physiotherapists. So I'm gonna go to myself. I, I've learned so much because to me, the, get, the gift to me was the injury because it's the feedback. Right. So everything I do now for everyone else, when I coach and I program people, I know if this stuff is a, is a no-go because I'll get feedback from it. 
Right. My hips, my back, my shoulders will, will let me know. Being strong was the thing that saved me. Strength conquers all, but if you're not in balance, you're going to still be in pain. Now, utilizing that balance from through a systematic perspective um, will really, really allow you to excel. Basically, you're gonna you're gonna hit your full potential. You're gonna hit you're gonna learn to hit, hit, hit the full ranges of your mobility. You're gonna be stronger than ever. You're gonna be more athletic than ever. You're gonna locomote and move better. Mm-hmm. You can you're gonna sit better. So what sort of um, equipment is allowing you to achieve this balance? So when you said it kind of put you off, saying um, the idea of going up, down, basically, with... Well, I movements. just don't want to fucking get a sciatica, bro. Yeah, no one does. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it really sucks. I think I got like a... Yeah, you, you get injuries, innit? You train in the gym, innit? Like, but I don't know if it was stress related. So it's like, it's like, it's wear and tear and the pressure related. But... If you're, you're going to get it on one side as well. Pretty much most people get it on one side as well. What, are you on about sciatica? Yeah. Yeah, no. So, like, how did you overcome this shit? Like, the, where did the balance come from? What equipment did you use? How did you discover this? So, I think, I think one man, main standout for unconventional lifting is because it's unconventional and none of it is effectively... It's, it's, it's a human construct in terms of the fact that we're the only animal that can swing and throw something. So chimpanzees and other primate, primates, they can't swing. Their, their shoulder joint doesn't allow it. They can't, they can't run after stuff and, and throw a spear or a club or a rock or something. They can't, they can't do it. Right. So that was one of our evolutionary um, uh, And you discovered aspects. this whilst you were training? Or yeah, what? so what you can't, but then what you come to realise is that, hang on a second, I've started doing this rotational movement with things like maces and clubs and then kettlebells as well, mm-hmm. with like particularly unilateral. And I noticed as well, I could carry extremely heavy sandbags from a sandbags weight perspective without having to put double the amount of load that I would with a barbell. So what that meant is I could train with the intensity I always was, embracing those CrossFit aspects mm. to rehabilitate myself. I could mentally stay in tune. I could get stronger than ever. And yet I was healing myself fundamentally. So what, what I'm doing now with people is helping them not only fix up issues if they have like issues related to structural uh, problems or what we, what we would say is someone's lacking tensegrity so your muscles are compensating to hold you up as opposed to using your structural system in place which is your skeleton um, that allows you when you're training like this it takes the load down and allows you to you can train more as well I find because you're not literally got that central nervous system load that's like crushing you down you're not doing these ridiculous sets with a barbell on your back because obviously when you've got a barbell on your back you can stand there with a bar on your your back as soon as you come out of that tensegrity in terms of you utilizing muscles to hold you up which is the squat portion then it gets a lot harder but standing with the barbell on your back is like that like it's, it's a lot easier isn't it so when you do it with a sandbag for example on kettlebell and the club it all comes on the floor so your posterior gets really strong you realize that your shoulders your thoracic mobility matches up to your hip mobility so when you've had injuries like i have spanning through you can put two and two together and just go like so this 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 is this is this is the key the key the key to this is a power in rotation so these keys mm. to finding your power in your rotation like when did you first come across the key like when was the first time you picked up a mace what was the first bit of equipment that you came across like when, when so did you find i it? always use sandbags and kettlebells and crossfit okay but then i kind of dumped the barbell and then just went solely with that because you can do every movement that you do with a kettlebell you can do with a barbell pretty much everything you can do with a sandbag you can do with a barbell all three of them work in the same ways you get the same movement patterns but the difference is with the sandbag as you found out when you did it when you can't pick it up you can't pick it up so you can't force these reps out in a way that you could with a barbell where people just push, push through bad form hmm. per se um that's a kind of a questionable thing in terms of form for me because people would say, for example, the sandbag, that's poor form because you've got full flexion of your spine. But your spine, is, if it wasn't designed to do that, it wouldn't be able to go through that range. Right. So when you're doing a number of sandbag pickups that, like you were doing when you trained with me, 
it's not actually problematic. It's actually, when you look at a baby, for example, it's rooted movement pattern is to come down and go into those positions to encapsulate, come underneath something and stand it from the bottom up, as opposed to loading something ridiculously heavy from the top up, because you won't be able to get it there in the first place when you're looking at it from a, from a natural perspective. There's nothing, I... there's nothing out there that's gonna be floating around per perfectly racked <coughs> up for you. So you've got to get it up, get it to Excuse here. Me. So any weaknesses are creased out as well. So that's the sandbags and the kettlebells. Yeah. When was the first time you found the mace? I started utilizing them pretty like hot. Like I was getting really into them probably eight, nine months ago. Right, okay. So I, I like, like, was like, yeah, I'm gonna really push this stuff here. Mm. So obviously everyone- has And what is, what is the mace, like this background? Like, do you know a little bit about the history of and what? Yeah, so, so the, the club, uh, probably the, the most prominently known club probably is the indian club yo people quickly just want to mention something that i know is going to be of extreme value to you you know when you go into the gym you're not motivated you're not seeing the results that you want to see or even you can't take yourself to the gym gyms are boring gyms are intimidating or it's just not really for you the workouts that you see going on yeah i can relate i've been there trust me Gravity fitness is the solution. And I'm saying that hand on heart, I would recommend it to anybody. There's a whole plethora of products you can choose from on the Gravity Fitness website. They are made to survive an apocalypse. So imagine what they're gonna do to your body and your physique. Gravity fitness is for all levels of individuals and athletes. It's for people that are trying to get into calisthenics. They've even got these gymnastic rings, so they're for gymnasts as well. You can do body weight exercises and then you can add a little weight to it with the weighted vest, which is adjustable as well. Long story short, bad boy product, that's why I'm bringing it to you. I'm a believer in it and I'm so grateful that they've partnered with this podcast to bring you 10% off all purchases. Now that is a game changer. I wish I had 10% off when I bought my first vest. I wish we had 10% off. So make sure you go check them out. Use the code ABS10 at checkout for 10% off. Now without further ado, let's get back into the content. A lot of this was designed for warriors. Like you couldn't go to war unless you could swing an axe 8,000 times because you die as soon as you put it down. Is that a fact? That's like a historical F thing. Fundamentally, what I'm saying is principally, yeah, you can't so swing so. it back to back to back to back to back without putting it down, someone's gonna kill you. Okay, okay, okay. So when, when you're looking at a club, for example, these movement patterns replicate like a shield, for example. So if someone were to strike you and you'd come up in this position here, that would be basically blocking. So you could call that, you would call that a shield cast. So you'd hold the club, which is the, 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 the stimulus, the weight, you dump it over the shoulder. You're gonna get the whole rotational aspect and then utilizing your lats, your obliques, driving your heels into the ground, your feet are gripping, it all does. As, it will start, the, these are the controls, the hands and the feet, and then the spine is where the power is utilized. So with the, the mace, for anyone that's new to this, the, the mace is basically- we're all, we're all new to this, yeah, we're all so very the new. The mace is basically fundamentally, uh, you can look at it like a, a steel stick, and yeah. all the weight is on one end of it. So you could look at like the ball of, a, the, the, uh, the base of a kettlebell kind of on one end, the weight is on one end, it's on a stick. The club is shorter, and it will get longer as the weight goes on, but the barrel of it's got the weight, so the weight's distributed more evenly and it's shorter. So when you're swinging it with a mace, you end up with a lot more of a, I personally get like a more of a flow state with it. So I like doing more one arm stuff at a lighter weight. Um, so I met you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. swinging a mace around yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, just chilling. Uh, outside to so the mace, you get more flow state. With the club, it comes down around a lot quicker because it's short of that leverage, it's like pings round and it feels more of a brutal grind mm. type of training. Mm. With a mace, you can go heavy with it. You really have to, but what, what you get when you, when you have this, these movement patterns is when, when you get heavier, if you're not doing it correctly, you know real quick. Right. Because you can't use your arms to do it. You've got to use your, the power, the muscle groups that are within your spinal region to do that. So, you were doing the sandbags and the kettlebells mm. for a couple of years first before you started using them. Yeah, because the CrossFit, like I was familiar with the Would you stuff. advise for somebody that's brand new 
to unconventional training, would you advise that they do three, four, five years of sandbags before using a mace and a kettlebells? Or with your guidance, are they able to jump straight in? Can anybody train like this? Or is it just for experts, professionals? Like, I think, I think what's the deal for someone who's I brand think new for to someone it? that just wants to get fit and and if they, they want to get fitter they don't want to go into gyms they want to get as I say get their, their feet on the ground get outside a bit more train within 10 minutes Providing you got and you actually study like go on YouTube or whatever if you needed to study just single movements one movement at a time pick a sandbag or a kettlebell bang it all out you can learn all that stuff yourself this is what i'm teaching people to teach them how to fish not giving them a fish if i if i get to a point where i'm kind of four or five months in depending on the individual and their background if i feel like i can just send them off and do their thing i haven't done the right thing I, I failed them because i what i'm teaching them is principles and fundamentals of and every single one of these things carry over into each other mm -hmm. the the maces and the clubs are a little more technical Especially when you're it's con consciously trying to engage something called the spinal engine fundamentally, which is the idea of your great power in the rotation of the spine. So when you're doing it that way, they, with a lack of understanding, you can do things wrong and you'll pick up some bad habits. Right. So, and especially if you've got weakness, like getting being able to get your your thoracic open enough, but without hyperextending and allowing like your ribs to pop up. You don't want that kind of stuff going on because that's, that's, that's a weak position to be in. Do so being, having that kind of guidance with that sort of thing is like, is, isn't kind of needed within reason. But if it's like kettlebells, anyone that has got a bit of common sense and wants to learn something, like so many people I do know that they've learned, they've taught themselves, mm -hmm. you can learn how to do a kettlebell and swing. And the advantage is that you might find a gym boring. So many people find it difficult to get into the gym. I didn't even clock my out at the barefoot here on this. Um, yeah, the Neanderthal thing, man. I rate it still, rate it. You live it, you live it, you breathe it, bro. You really live it, you breathe it. It's hard. That's actually how I met you, like barefoot on the grass, swinging the mace around. Yeah. It's crazy. It's real, real stuff. I had some guy with these cool shades come yeah, up to me. Yeah, like... yeah, doing my thing, yeah. <laughs> Defo, uh, Defo, very chilled Meanwhile, out. shouting at the dog to come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing his thing. So we're out in the wild on the park. But yeah, so that's that's one of the benefits like that I see from this unconventional training. It's not normal. It's not in a gym. You can do it anywhere, any place, anytime. It's more fun. It's more in. It's it's more mentally and physically stimulating. Hundred percent. There are so many people that are missing out on the benefits of sunlight of, you could uh, get them up early in the morning they get more sunlight for example they get in the morning light they walk around train, outdoors barefoot you train in your back garden yeah right that's what, so what i'm saying so and some people don't even want to go to the gym because they for whatever reason like Conscious, it's just, they just just got internal consciousness and stuff like that yeah, other people so or that just doesn't interest them exactly and then you give you, oh, genuinely the number of blokes i give them i just yeah. mess around i go yeah. try swinging that club around they can't do it necessarily well yeah. Yeah. but they go that feels right yeah their, their, their intuition their instincts this is what i'm the saying the primal necessity comes out like it, it, it it's intuitive that's my before so look let's talk about the the, the the lifestyle behind it a little bit more like as well like you know this this, this primal necessity and like, do you spend more time in the gym or out of the gym? You personally now, like, you know, with, yeah. your, with your lifestyle training, like, what would you say? So, I every every day, I ground. So I get my feet on the ground. Sweet. So that's a fundamentally you're you're rebalancing out the the, the energy that that um, can be emitted onto you from the environment, from things like your Wi-Fi screen, you know, TV screens, blah blah blah. The modern world that we're living, sitting in cars bus whatever and it, it, it accumulates and to be honest with you i do believe that it's a large part of people's anxieties having overexposure to blue light etc so hence one of the reasons why i met you outside in the park it's just mm. that deload top off yeah in the no morning, shoes on like uploading downloading that sunlight and that that wake up call from 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 nature, I guess, which is what we are. We are nature still. It doesn't mean you can't live in this world, but you just need to pay consciousness 
a level of consciousness to what your yeah. body is feeling and demanding. So you do grounding in the morning. Grounding in the morning. Then or what? actually, to be honest, in the evening, just because I just, I just like the sun. There's a nice little hill. The sun's yeah. like on it. So yeah. it's down. It's nice. Um, obviously, take my shoes off because otherwise I won't be touching the ground unless I'm yeah. sat on the ground. Yeah, so, it's quite like hippie vibes, isn't it? As it, well. it? It is, but it. I went to Glastonbury and everyone was like barefoot, hippie vibes, grounded. Dude, I'm, I'm walking around in December with flip-flops on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got a hole in my shoes this year. So that's I like realized a my feet were going to get wet anyway, so I just put the flip-flops on. Oh, yeah, sounds, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds, sounds. <laughs> There's puddles and it's raining that. all the time, so I just put the flip-flops on because my socks were getting wet. So grounding's a big thing, right? Yeah. Um, what about, like, uh, diet? Yeah, so diet. I, I, I'm not a nutritionist. But what I will say is what I eat, which yeah, yeah. is uh, a carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah. So if it, if it goes moo or quack. It's almost as like liver king vibes. Yeah, pretty much. Because that stuff there is the stuff that saved my life. How? Uh, I was vegan for four years. I swear. Not from health. You don't even strike me as a vegan. You know the amount of stuff that you talk, chat about, like... I was, I was... Meat and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so I was vegan for four years, but it wasn't, it wasn't for health, it wasn't for right. It was purely because I just didn't want to participate in the slaughter of animals in the slaughterhouse. That was the reason for it. Mad. Um, my sister, she was vegetarian and vegan as well, and she had exactly the same issues as me. And she now eats an animal-based diet. So that's, you're looking at 80% 80, 80 animal-based. And then she puts like fruits, some like less toxic vegetables with, 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 uh, with her meals and that. She said she's got a life back, you know. I, I eat a car I'm pretty like vigorous carnivore. Um, as you might be able to tell, I'm pretty disciplined with myself, so I don't struggle with that. So I, I like, pretty much every day is beef and eggs, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. I eat a little bit of organic pork once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, if you, get, I, I, I eat liver probably once a week. Mm -hmm. I just eat a big load of liver once a week. Mm -hmm. um, That's in line with this. Tastes pretty good as well. I can't say I've ever eaten a heart, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, man, it's good. Kidneys are good. Make sure we boil them to get the wee out. That's mad. Um, to get the wee out. Yeah, man. Kidneys fill the blood, don't they, for the wee? So you got to you got to get you got to get the wee out. So that's mad. That's crazy. But you know what? I feel like everyone is on their journey for like nutritional things. Like what work? I feel like what works for some people may not work for everybody. Like everybody's body might be slightly different as well because you do have people that are like have allergies and, and, and stuff mm. like that. And I don't know, man. But it's interesting to hear um, how, you know what I'm saying, similarities between, you know, people that are blown up on the internet like Liver King and then there's people in Nottingham doing their thing like yourself who have transitioned from a vegan diet to a mainly carnivorous diet. It so never goes the other way. It never goes. It ne it's what do you mean? never gone the other way. It's uh, never gone so? from carnivore to vegan. I feel like, no, there's definitely some it people is. out there. They, they, even like myself, bro. Like, I, I look into, Sorry, I look into the vegan, but I look into the, the this alkaline, this alkaline, yeah, this alkaline diet. Nah, no, man, there's got to be something to it, bro. You know, you, you, so when you're training, you're living. You know about Dr. Sebi? No, I'm loving Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a couple, there's like alkaline diets. There's many be like, removing a lot of toxicity you mentioned toxic vegetables so uh, what i would say yeah so eating plants is definitely not a way to detoxify because you're adding in more toxic mm. toxicity into the system so whether 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 it's is beneficial for the body or not because that compound effectively is impacting that issue potentially it doesn't necessarily mean that the body's the liver's not working to get rid of it so it could have an anti-inflammatory impact on the body, but your body's still looking at it basically foreign to an extent, if you get what I mean. I don't know. I feel I definitely have been on like my own journey of like nutrition and things like that. Like I personally, I'm on the meat eating thing as well, but I also feel like plants definitely give me a decent amount of energy, fiber. If I'm cutting down in weights, then I'll eat a lot of salad, 
and then me as well. But I've recently looked at this. It has its place like, for people that are trying to lose weight. Because obviously, yeah. a lot of like low low sugar fruits and stuff. That yeah, yeah. They yeah. do take. They do have some beneficial compounds for sure. I'm not yeah. saying that they can't be beneficial, but they yeah. don't need to be included in the diet every single day. Yeah. Uh, to the extent where people think, if I don't have my grams of, I don't eat any fiber. I mean, yeah, I have to. Healthier. But I have it's to. not. It's not required. It's not required. I have to. I have to eat fiber. <laughs> I have to, brother, I have to, bro. Insides, mate. This is necess- it's a necessity, man. So there's no, there's no, for my, for there's me no required personally. amount of fiber for any human being. There's no required amount of glucose, and there's no required or carbohydrate, and there's no required amount for alcohol, and there's definitely no required amount for fiber. So l- let me ask, you, let me ask you this one, in it, because you did like, obviously, you mentioned. This is through your life experience as mm. well. Like you're not a nutritional. Yeah, 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 sure. Well. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your intake? Because you mentioned quite a lot of like sophisticated ideas and concepts, yeah. Mm. And you, 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 you had a qualification as well you, with these, the landmine. Yeah, landmine university. Yeah. And what was the coil? The, the, the coil. Yeah, so well. but, but also, but what I was gonna say is this: is like, what's your opinion on like experience? Over qualification, sure. Now, how does that factor into like your your mindset and your training of your coaching of other people as well? Like, is that a thing? Yeah, like I I I would take anyone with a guaranteed amount of experience over a qualification. For me, personally, mm. um, and those people I find as well can practice what they preach. Mm. They, they they follow. They can they can stick to what they're saying. Prime example is some, you know, you look at in the medical world, you're looking at doctors and it's an overweight person, obese person sat there in a wheelchair that doesn't move all day, giving you advice about your health. He doesn't ask you if you exercise much. He doesn't ask what your diet's like. Um, he is more concerned about, or she is more concerned about your, chole- your cholesterol for some reason over so many other issues that are going on with the blood panel. Did you have, or, you know when you were doing the physio thing, did you have like a experience with like m- medical professionals who you believe yeah. didn't know what they were yeah. talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And... But get that experience. Learn how to, 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 to read your bloods if you want to get your bloods done. If you're more of a biohacking route... The way I live is like, you can look at it like kind of hippie, as you said, or uh, yeah, I, yeah, I prefer yeah. primal, but at the end of the day, yeah. the, the simplest form of biohacking is living the way as the human being was intended to live, which is outside in nature, mm. right? Under the sky, like not locked up in, in like a caged lion. So um, having, having doctors and stuff and, and the medical system where it's kind of like, oh, you can just take another antidepressant okay, great, how many times have we heard that of friends that are on and on medication? But that's totally fine if it's required. There's a time for medical interventions. I had a medical intervention when my spine was cut into. But it's got to be it's got to be justified. It can't just be like, okay, so I, I, do you sit down all day? Okay, well, that's probably why your back hurts. Are you exercising? Okay, that's yeah, probably so what, why you're, you're overweight. What about like a personal trainer? So they need to practice what they preach. Like I would, pers- I do see like fat personal trainers. Yeah, they're walking around with a Big Mac and 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 some like maybe not a Big Mac, but they're like no, I, I've overweight. Seen it. Like, no, I see it nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walk past them, sat there having a, a coffee. It's the only vegetable I do have, black coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And um, I sat there and I'm just like, I know that guy is like works in that gym. He's training people. He, he's he's creating, he's qualified. He's essentially, he's qualified to. And it, it doesn't matter what your qualification is. You're representing. You're representing the fitness community and people that can make a change. Your health is your wealth above anything. And I think the pandemic showed that more than anything because suddenly people ex- extraordinary amounts of money can do anything. They were still down the line because nature doesn't discriminate and it kills you. Mm. And people couldn't pay their way out of that. So health is wealth. And these people that are PTs that can't practice what they preach. But are qualified. That are qualified. They know it, it doesn't matter whether you, you look at nutrition from the perspective where you're like, I need a bit of plants. I don't need a bit of plants, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We're both talking fundamentally about the same idea of a high, higher in healthy fats, definitely a lot of protein, right? Lower carbohydrate just to match your energy requirements if you're going to use carbs as your fuel source as opposed to fat. 
or your or if you're trying to lose weight or whatever. Mm. And it's like we're all fundamentally saying the same thing. I'm not bothered about that really. I have my way of doing things. I try and just keep as kind of ancestrally yeah, appropriate yeah, yeah, yeah. as possible. That's just the way I am. It's in line with your brand and like and who you I are. I don't I don't have food anxieties at all because I'm like, guess what's for dinner? Oh, guess what? I mean my flatmate are like, oh it's beef. Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's no thought about it. It's like beef. So so but what we're saying is that like look the people that are qualified they set the example like and they may not necessarily have bad. The yeah they might not have the experience well there you go then this is the problem with the system that we're living in once again it crops back up doesn't it how yeah. you know people you can go online and get a pt qualification in five weeks right and suddenly they're allowed that five weeks later they're allowed to go and check, try and potentially change other people's lives that's true because I've been offered the PT qualification in f like three to five weeks so listen thank you for that but yeah I appreciate that I wanted to ask you that question because I feel like it's I feel like it's relevant as well you get a gist of it and I, I think a lot of people feel the same way where they won't want to be taught by someone that can't count maths so why would I want someone that can't practice what it's like it's you go to fit. uni right yeah. and you do a business course yeah. And the teacher has never I'll had a business. business. <laughs> yeah. So that's crazy. So, um, yo, know, quickly on the lifestyle thing, right? I mean, I have to talk about this, a brand specialist show, a brand show. You are on social media. I am. Right. But that doesn't really willingly pay a part to your lifestyle or how does, yeah, you see, you try and keep it as primal as possible. You're interested in training. How do you feel about like social media, growing a brand, shit like that? Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's quite apparent. It's a necessity. If you, yeah, um, most people are glued to their phones, so I can't like people don't want to interact. With yeah, because you post every day. More. But you is it true that every day. I do you don't every day. you don't have the app installed? Yeah, so I have an iPad that I do my work on. Right. And then I have my phone, which has just got like WhatsApp on it. Okay whatever yeah and the apple stuff that's on my iphone but like the work so i i physically cannot get on the only social media i have which is instagram and what i do post on that i try and i try and be as genuine and as authentic as i can as myself why because the, so there's there's the, there's the other part of me where, where i did do a degree in graphic design there's an inner creative uh, we've discussed a lot of, you know, kind of philosophical concepts as yeah, well yeah, of yeah, things. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a creative at heart. I like, I like, someone tells me something, question everything. You know, that's it, question everything. How is that relevant to the authenticity of being online? And so when I'm posting stuff, it's... The, oh, you feel like people... I feel like that, that there, like that creative thing that you do, even though if you feel like... No one's even listening. So that's a large part of being a, a creative. What what a brand specialist is is a creative yeah, yeah, yeah. business prospect. People, you feel like people aren't necessarily listening. But mm -hmm. when you post something up, that whether it be from a, a a mental perspective, like post a quote up, and you know the idea of something as simple as like Confucius or something like that, where you're like. Um, you know, rolling small stones eventually built to make a mountain, and someone that follows me. They, they, they relate to that. That could have just changed their perspective. So I think it's quite important for me to post little things like that once in a while consistently, <laughs> but not a load of crap. You know, it's not yeah. flooding people's stories up. They click yeah. on it. Yeah. And then authentic in terms of every workout I do pretty much goes up on there. Now, I do do other things as well, like jiu-jitsu and wrestling, and anyone that's done more than one sport, they train heavily at one, will understand that it takes its toll on the CNS as well. Take, uh, the what, central, central nervous, nervous system. system. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, you know, bashing ads, wrestling, and all that stuff, whilst lifting up heavy sandbags, and that you know, if you do that for four or five days in a row, it accumulates. So with the social media thing, I try and keep it real, and I'll, I'll, I I say to people, I'll be like, you know, guys, I'm gonna be doing more grappling or whatever at the moment, so I'll go do more grappling, and people like kind of, they kind of love like the fact that I'm engaging with them on a human level. Because mm. at the end of the day, I'm a human. And mm. some days I don't post anything at all. Mm. And I'll go and date those days where I just need to swim my mace around and stand outside. Mm. And I'll completely detach myself, even from just the iPad mm. sort of thing. Mm. So once again, that's a practice what you preach. The, the, the Instagram 
world, the social media world, is not the real world. And I get drawn as as reluctant, not anti, but reluctant as I am to to using it at times. Mm-hmm. You have to draw. You have to separate those two minds of like, right, this is how I apply my business, and then it's like come away from that. Now I need to do me, mm. and people do actually appreciate that. The type of people that follow me generally do appreciate that and they understand that because they're like, the guys are human at the end of the day and everything he puts out is like full of heart. Like he does care mm. and he shows everything that he can mm. and like he brings you along with that, if that makes sense, mm. puts in. But he's, he, he's practicing what he preaches. He goes, get off of social media, go do something creative. It doesn't necessarily all have to be lifting. Get grounded or anything. That's it. Get yeah, ground yourself. Just ground you, yourself fundamentally. Your your profile is um, is public, right? It's not private. No, you can follow it. It's just it's a lot of me just swinging maces, the kettlebells, the, the sandbags. I sometimes post the workouts that I did up on there. Yeah. And then if you if it's, so for anyone if they're in America, it's twenty dollars because it's an American like site ensemble, or it's like thirteen dollars. Wait, ensemble. What is what is ensemble? So ensemble is basically a um, it's basically my page that that I would use. So the the web, is that a platform. Yeah, it's a platform. So the platform basically has all these different uh, coaches on there. Really, really good if you you want to find specific un- unconventional um, coaches. Yeah. So, so it's, it's not the sort of thing where you have PTs per se. Even if they're qualified as a PT, it's more of a they're uh, a coach, more of a teacher. Where it could be something from yoga kind of perspective down to like, the heavy lifting. My way, people find you on ensemble. Yeah, but just I, I, they can find me on ensemble. And then every workout I do, I post up on there. On so ensemble, it's, yeah. it's like a, a short. I literally have a video written down everything I do, and I talk over it. Wow. So it it. it, will just tell you what I did, the warm up, and and most of these workouts, (laughs) you don't you don't have to do all eight rounds. No, no, no. eight rounds or something. You can you can very easily just do five and then use a bit of common sense and possibly get a little heavier so it's more intense or it's just five rounds that day. What made you? Fine, but it could be done in half an hour, forty five minutes easy. What made you feel? the need like why did you start to film workouts and speak over them because people i don't even think there's pts out there so for someone that's not a social media guy you've taken it one step further to film your workouts every single one of them and post it on this platform Mm. and talk over it and talk people through it why and when uh because that's what that's what needs to be done if you've got people that you know, as I, as I was saying, it's, it's twenty dollars or thirteen quid, depending on whatever it's doing. Yeah. Um, and like, it's not much, but I have guys that are in Nottingham. I have people from America, from America that, uh, that that use it and stuff. And it's just like, it's not a huge amount, but at the end of the day, I'm explaining and running through. There's a, the reason why I'm doing it is because it needs to be done. People need to understand. And also, it's unconventional training, so people need a little bit of a rundown and stuff. I plan to in the future obviously elaborate on that a little bit and then I'm going to probably start doing like a movement tutorial library as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but things like that take months to do. So, yeah, no, it's cool. Which is like... I'm little, just fascinated by the way... Small stones make a mountain kind of thing, as I said. Bro, you've built up this portfolio of workouts and you're being watched by people from both sides of the globe or from all over the globe. It's quite... It's quite interesting the way that you, even though you're on this primal way of living and you don't have Instagram on your phone, you've still gone and taken the time out to film your workouts and talk over it and reach a worldwide audience as well. Like, has anyone, what sort of, like, I'm sure they have, like, what sort of feedback have people given you from your training and what sort of demographic, like, who's your usual client? Is there a is there a conventional client or is it from all different um, yeah, walks of so life, bro? Following on Instagram, obviously you got people that just like this stuff. There's actually a very quite I would say relatively speaking, considering everyone's from all over the world, quite a tight network of people who engage and know each other on social media from 
like ju- just because the idea of kettlebells, maces, sandbags, and people respect their kind of niche. Like there's some guys that are hauling the big big sandbags. There's guys out there that are just behemoths on kettlebells. You're like we're talking like ninety kilo kettlebells pressed on one arm. You're like, geez, these guys just like make me pathetic, look mm. pathetic. <laughs> um, but these guys are massive like mm. dudes and uh, maces and clubs so like so there's uh, on social media that that's kind of like you got that and then you just got like everything else in between on, on, mm. on that with the the training side of things your clients clients base there isn't anyone in particular i think it, it generally co- common thing is open-mindedness another thing that's quite a common thing is the fact that people are either new to training and training in the gym never appealed to them for the the, the, the self um, conscious aspects of it, um, not having anyone else to do it with, not knowing what they're doing. Um, it just doesn't appeal to them in that sort of way. But the idea of getting outside a bit more is more them. The sort of people that maybe just like playing football on a Sunday, they'd rather go play football than do a timed run. Mm-hmm. people a bit more just open and free they like that they just want to kind of put time on and just swing a mace for 20 minutes mm-hmm. that's the that's the beauty of what i do you know there's no limits and bounds to it mm-hmm. so the, anyone that's new to people that are the other end of the spectrum so i have some fighters as well you sorry fighters as well yeah. um so they 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 really like the landmine system because it, it really died i'm I haven't got any personally any rugby clients, but like rugby clients and stuff, mm-hmm. footballers, anyone that's athletic, mm. like mine's like that. So what's the? Because I'm conscious that we've had a very get a decent chat, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but what? So what sort of feedback do you get from? You know, previous clients. You said you teach basically. You teach them how to catch a fish. You don't give them a fish. You teach yeah, them how to catch yeah. fish. Like, what's the feedback that you get? And then maybe tell us a bit more quickly about the the landmine thing yeah, yeah. and the coil a method. Yeah. Um, if we've got a moment, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, the the feedback normally is if they have pre-existing issues with like like joint pain and stuff like that, that that normally fixes up. That that goes normally, or anyone that felt what they perceived as good feels better. Mm. You know, they feel like, oh yeah, I can just kind of do this like every day. You know, what more? I can just take more volume because the the, the nature of swinging stuff decompresses your joints. Mm, better mobility. Better mobility, and as I said, it literally decompresses the joint. You're throwing something away, so it takes it takes the the momentum away right. of of the object you're, you're you're moving. Yeah, and it's gonna take pressure out. You know. So it's called traction. That's what it's called. So it's engaging the muscle, but also also the joints in a, a state where it's uh, it's not compressed. So they feel more mobile. Yeah, more mobile. The crazy thing is, is when I went, I went for three months of just doing clubs and mace swing, and my bench press PB by twenty kilos. And I don't bench. I got pancake tits. I don't bench ever. <laughs> and I literally went up twenty kilos like that. From I didn't touch a bench once. And, and all I did was clubs and maces. And the people that train with you reporting the same, same thing. But, yeah, people, not necessarily in bench specifically, but they'll just go, I went back to something and they go, this was just so was easy. Crazy. Because like they're deadlift and they're like, I haven't picked anything half that weight up and it's gone up monumentally because I'm so used to picking up sandbags so deep. Yeah. So in so much flexion, for example, that the spinal erectors have that full range that they can move through. Yeah. And their, their, their lower lumbar region and the, the back pain goes yeah. and then obviously pairing that up with the lighter load work of the, yeah. of, of lighter kettlebells it was like swinging or the mace and the club you just end up with this absolutely bulletproof body like it, it just works it just works That's mad. it just works and it feels good mentally physically the, the people and then uh, the, the fighters they just a lot the first thing that I noticed was much better hip drive much better hip drive. So they were utilizing more power from the hips when they were striking and taking down, for example. So you have fighters that come and train. Yeah. On so with the, the, the landmines, one thing that I do, because, just because a lot of them are stuck in gyms. Cool. So I try and get heavy, heavy sandbags or get, the kettlebells are very universal. Yeah. You can get them in any gym. Yeah. Sandbags is more of the sort of thing where they just don't have them anywhere. So yeah. it's like, if they're willing to come and mine or they have them at home or they're gonna get one, then cool. Um, 
Uh, I recommend that to clients that want to start training at home, like a bag and a bell. And then once we, I start teaching them the maces and the clubs, which take a bit longer, yeah. then obviously... And it actually training. helps them when they're in the fighting Yeah, Yeah, ring, oh, yeah for sure. Because the, kinet, the kinetic chain, the movement, when you're using something like yeah. this movement here, you're, when you're striking someone, it's that hammer... That hammering down with the lat. So which sort of which fighters you training? What fighting? What fighting so style? So Millie, Millie uh, Vardy, she's lo she's in knots. No, uh, what does she do? What does she do? She's MMA fighter. Yeah, that's yeah she she's uh, she's got a fight in September. That's but so, bro, let's wrap this up with three tips that yeah. you might want to give to somebody who's sure. interested in getting into what you do. So starting kind of a new page in terms yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. lifestyle or in terms of, or, or both? Both, yeah. Okay, so with lifting, I would say we'll pick, the landmine is very specific, so we'll exclude that one for now. Yeah. Um, maybe that's the time for another chat. But with the, the maces, uh, the clubs, the kettlebell or the sandbag, start off with one of them and then chip your way through, if that makes sense. The kettlebell and the sandbag, you can probably put together. Mm. The maces and the clubs are quite specific, but the club will really help with the kettlebell mm. stuff. And, and just pick through and just start. Don't, don't ever be anxious. Don't get intimidated by people that are doing that type of thing if you see other people doing it. Mm. Go up to them, approach them. They're going to be open-minded people. They'll, they'll, they'll teach you how to do that kind of and stuff. And what if there's no one Pick about. one of those three in terms of, this is what I'd say in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Pick one of those three and just get it and just keep chipping away so you get confident and go through all the movement patterns. You, YouTube. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So like Strong First is a really good kettlebell uh, website. Uh, guy guy basically created, um, Pavel, he basically created the kettlebell uh, philosophy training system. Mm. And then with, with the uh, lifestyle thing, I would say... If you just increase your, I, I, I'm not referring to this from anyone that's vegetarian or vegan out there. As I said, I was vegan myself, mm. but try and get as many, much high quality protein, which fundamentally comes from animal sources. It's bioavailable without any anti-nutrients and keep your protein content high on a daily basis. And mm. if you want to put more muscle and lose weight, it's going to happen. So what uh, we've From got, a lifestyle perspective. Don't be intimidated, choose the mace. The club or the kettlebell. Or the sandbag. The sandbag or the, or the kettlebell. Or the yeah. sandbag. Approach someone who's doing it or go on YouTube and yeah. make sure you get high quality protein in the yeah, diet. Yeah, get sunlight every day. And Try and get hot or cold every day. Move every day. It's that simple. There you have it, folks. Make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know your feedback. Get involved. Don't miss out. Peace.